Hello and welcome to another webinar from the Accountants Mastermind. My name is Mark and today I'm joined by Kanayu from Synergy. Say hello, Kanayu. Oh, hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, Mark. How's he doing? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. And today we're going to be talking about how robots can help your practice improve your process systems and automate lots of work that you find probably a long time to take to do and also a bit boring. So let's get started. Please give a warm uh, Zoom welcome to uh, Kanayo. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Mark. I'll just uh, share my screen and then we can make a start. Um, so I'm hoping that everybody can see my screen. Uh, so again, good morning, everyone. So I'm Kanayo, like Mark said, I'm from a company called Synergy. Uh, what, what do we do? We... We are in the on the mission to make work less boring and less tedious for um, accountants and uh, uh, bookkeepers, um, and we do that by uh, well introducing them to a piece of technology called robotics process automation. And uh, today I'm going to be sharing my view, and it mightn't be the only view, on what I see as the future of bookkeeping. Uh, and in particular, I'll be looking at how you know, robots are changing the way we do work, you know, today. So uh, bear with me. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, share them with uh, Mark. And Mark, you can stop me at any time. If it's something I'm going to cover further down the line, I'll just crave your indulgence. But if not, I, I can answer them as quickly as possible. Okay. So um, the agenda for today. Uh, so Today we'll be looking at how you know uh, we can provide. I'm going to provide an overview of the importance or relevance of data, data entry and reconciliation, and how bookkeeping robots can help to automate those kind of tasks. We'll equally look at what bookkeeping robots are and how they are different from other types of automation. I'll give a demonstration on uh, uh, bookkeeping robots. Uh, I'll use a couple of uh, use cases. Uh, and share some of the benefits that we're finding in industries from uh, using uh, bots for uh, data entry and low level uh, work. And I'll equally share some real life examples of how um, these bots have been successfully implemented and are helping uh, practices, uh, especially within the UK. All right, so let, let's, let's get started. Um, so, in a nutshell, if, 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 you're, if you're a practice out there and you're still um, relying on manual repetitive tasks to complete vital business processes, then you're probably feeling some of this pain in your business at the moment. It's very likely that your employee's time, 22% of their time is spent on uh, low level tasks. And this is eating up most of your time um, and 50% of all automation opportunities are being lost or missed in your in your practice and this is so a lot in, in a lot of practices nowadays you find that there are a lot of cloud, cloud accounting tools like the zeros and the quickbooks and a host of others which helps with automation but if you're still having to do those le low level tasks then you're missing missing a lot um these are some just for the for the fun of it some uh, some industry stats for the seven percent of accounting professionals say that manual data entry and inefficient processes are some of their biggest challenges they time suck you know and we've, we're finding in financial services organizations 34 percent of them rely on manual processes to complete uh the the work that they need to do as you'd imagine this in, this these inefficiencies translate to uh, a whole host of problems within businesses and it doesn't matter the size of business or uh, business you have obviously the bigger the business the the higher the uh the cost to them of these inefficiencies and it, and it, it reflects in the following you have you have reduced productivity as the number one that's what everybody sees you have people who, who are uh you're having to pay a lot but what they are doing can really be done by you know junior employees 
um, there's a lack of visibility into what happens and how it's done within the organization, within the practice, uh, there are inconsistencies. So one, because some of those processes are not documented, you're, you're reliant on uh, human knowledge or what someone knows to be able to carry out their task or their assignment. So what happens is that there are different ways that things are done within the organization. There's no real best practice that everybody follows or there's no consistency in the way work is done. Now, all that leads to you having to employ more knowledgeable workers, which effectively increases labor cost in your practice, right? Because if you have the lower level, um, if you're having people who are less knowledgeable doing the work, then you're bound to have data entry errors and having to do rework, which translates to uh, lower customer satisfaction and ultimately a loss in revenue. So there are all sorts of challenges with manual tasks, right? Now, what what we what um, RP what this technology does is it helps to um, to automate some of those lower level tasks. So essentially, we are going for more more manual uh, uh, task processing to automating those lower level tasks. And that's using uh, robotic process automation, like I said. So these RPA powered bots uh, are trained or have been configured or, uh, or programmed to perform those structured and routine uh, bookkeeping tasks. You know, if you, if you think in terms of examples, you're looking at things like maybe bank reconciliation or payroll processing or copy paste from Excel into some other application or having to download stuff from your email and the list goes on and on. So they, they can be trained to do those kind of tasks and they can work with any of your current applications. So it doesn't matter whether it's a cloud accounting uh, software or, or is it a legacy, a legacy system from the 80s that's stuck on your desktop computer. But by, by automating uh, by automating those kind of tasks, you free up your time from those manual repetitive tasks so that you can focus on those that require human judgment. And as well, you'll be helping your employees to dedicate more of their time to uh, the kind of work that adds value, not just to the organization, but to your clients as well. So you can now start gearing from less about compliance services and uh, admin uh, work and more to value add advisory services uh, for your clients. All right, so that, that's me talking a lot, but I think um, one of the best things that I find is by showing uh, what it could look like. So I'll, I'll take this imaginary scenario, which I'm sure a lot of us can identify with. So this, let's say this is a alpha beta accounting firm and they provide bookkeeping services to their clients. They use uh, zero for, for uh, bank reconciliation. And this is a standard process for them. So they have a junior uh, bookkeeper called John and John's task is to uh, get work ready for the more, more senior colleagues. And he does that by every morning he goes into, he logs into zero and he goes through a host of clients that are assigned to him. He looks at those low level tasks, which are tasks that have an apply rule against them. Those tasks that are green match that you can very easily check whether there's a, date, a good date range that matches and whether there are options and whether they all match, whether the names match and all that. So the basic uh, if then rules kind of task within um, uh, zero bank rec. Right. So, so John on a typical day will log into Zero, select a client and a business account, and then he will go through these steps. Step two to to make sure that I reconcile as many of those trans transactions in the business account as possible. When he finishes it with the business account, he will ignore anything that doesn't match the rules in step two, and then repeat the process for all business accounts belonging to the client. Once he finishes with a client, he moves on to the next client and repeats the races and repeats the process, right? So steps two and three, again, fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but this uh, particular task takes up in some cases as much as 70% of a bookkeeper's time, right? So what I'm going to show in the next, in the, uh, what I'm going to show us down is how a bot could relieve John of having to worry about that low level task so that you can move on to other things. So you'll see me, uh, this is the application that runs the bot. So you'll see me click on the run button. 
And then everything else that happens on the screen after this is being done by a robot. So you'll see the robot actually physically open a browser, launch a browser, navigate to zero, log in with his own credentials, and gets with a, a, a client, in this case, we're looking at a demo account, and then start performing the reconciliation. So it will go through the same rules. So if it has, if it's green matched and has no option, it's gonna click okay. If it has an apply rule against it and matches other criteria like the name, it will click okay. If it comes across a transaction that doesn't meet those requirements, it will ignore. So it's ignored the first one. And it's going to ignore this one that has that's a uh, a potential match, according to so zero is making a suggestion, but it's not exactly sure. So, but it's so it's not green matched and does have an apply rule, and the bot ignores, right? So that's zero error on the part of the bot. It does what it's been trained to do over and over again. All right. So we'll give it a few minutes to complete its assignment. And then what we should see happen at the end of it all is it will move to another client and then, you know, it was, it's going to log out. But that's what's been trying. So you can do rinse and repeat for all clients that's been assigned to, to it, similar to any human worker. Okay. And then what, once it's gone through, um, so what, while this is happening, Mark, do we have any questions at this point? Just check in. Um, there isn't. Um, but I was just going to ask very quickly, I thought, which I think you've just said about um, the, the different, this is going to go on to a different customer afterwards, is it? So if if there are any, so, so is, when you're training it, it, it's looking out for the particular OK button as opposed to anything else. So it will just go through however many pages there are in this reconciliation you don't have to teach it to go through five pages you just have to teach it the process is that right exactly so so it's been trained to it's been trained to go through everything on the page and then go to the next page and the next so it doesn't matter whether it is one transaction or thousands of transactions so we just keep going through all the pages still it's gone through everything and once it finishes it will do exactly what it's doing now is check whether there's another business account. There's none, so it's moving to it's flipped over to another client. But at this point, I've told this to stop because it'll just be more of the same. Okay. Right. Um, so it's finished and it logs yeah. out. So we've had we've had two questions which are fairly similar. Um, Carly yeah. and Carla have asked about does it have does it have its own login to zero, um, and how does it navigate multi-factor authentication? Ah, uh, very very good question. Uh, so yes, it has its own uh, login credentials. And when it comes to two-factor authentication, so there are, there are two options, um, as we, we know. So uh, in some cases where we have, so we have the two-factor authentication that is mobile-based. So what we train it to do is if it comes across the two-factor authentication request, it can email, it can email the, a request to someone within the team, it could be the owner, it could be someone else, to say, hey, I've, I've I just tried to log into my account. There is a two-factor authentication request. Can you please help me uh, to uh, put in the code so that I can continue working? So that's that's scenario one. Scenario two, we uh, we also implement, we could also implement uh, a desktop authentication uh, app. Uh, which gives the bot full autonomy. So if it comes across the 2FA, it will generate a, a uh, the code using through the uh, desktop app and continue with the login process as, as you and I would, pretty much. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so uh, Nicole's asked about prices, which I know will come on to nearer to the end. So I'll, I'll, I'll park that one for a moment. Um, Mel has asked, can it do Dext too? Uh, yes, it can, but you can sense my hesitation, right? <laughs> uh, so, so, so I have to be the desk. Desk is a very powerful tool, uh, and I find that in the in the right hands, it will do pretty much ninety five percent of what you what any robot could do. So, desk is almost like another robot, right? So, you can do almost ninety five percent of what any robot will do or this robot can do. 
if not more, because it has other features. Uh, the five percent or so, yeah, that re that's remaining actually requires human judgment. So generally speaking, we advise clients. So if they if they haven't maxed out on Dex's capabilities, we advise them to reach out to Dex to you know work with them to make sure that they get it right. Uh, because what happens is so. If you do the work in DEX, then DEX will be, like I said, 95%. So imagine 100 transactions come in, DEX is able to do 95% of it. You have 95% of those sat in zero that you have to manually reconcile, right? But they are really ready to, to go. So that's where the bot actually comes in because what it can now do is to pick up that 95 and reconcile it without any manual intervention in zero. So, so we tend to work hand in glove with with dex if that makes sense i mean like i said we can do that but really at the end of the day it wouldn't make it wouldn't make sense okay brilliant thank you um so uh, jeff has asked if it doesn't find a match uh, for example because there is a missing purchase invoice can it or does it send an email to the client with a list requesting these it's flexible if that's what you want it to do Yes, it can. Uh, um, yes. So, so the, the, the technology is quite flexible. It follows, it follows the rules that you put in place. If that makes sense. So it can send an email. We can templatize and we can create an email template that says, okay, so if I haven't, if I can't find this transaction, please send, you know, a record to a, a request to a client to provide the information. So yes, it can. Um, a lot of but again, in practice, I find that a lot of uh, accountants and bookkeepers will rather have for I check it to make sure, understand what the actual request is before contacting the their clients. Yeah, but technically speaking, what can do that? I guess it's just to make sure that, that it hasn't missed something that could have been spotted with the with the you know with the with the human eye. Yeah, uh, well, I think it's less about spotting because if if it, if so. This is more those transactions that are not green matched. Okay. So non green matched transactions, what usually, if it's not green matched, it means that there's no invoice or there's we're waiting for some information. So the invoice might be sat in zero, but there's no payment yet. There are also some re no, sorry, the payment has been made, but you can't, there's no documentation to support it. Uh, and a request has to be sent to client. Or it could be any number of reasons, you know. So, okay. but somebody wants to, one, A, look at it to understand what it is and if it's something that can be be uh streamlined a bit more so an example would be where zero has looked at the transaction and suggested a match so not yeah. a green match thing, but they just suggested a name in that because it's been seeing it happening because there's ai within zero right and he suggested it now someone you could look at it and now just pop off an email but having looked at it someone could now say okay well yeah okay that that makes sense let me create a rule around it so that each time it happens zero will just put an apply rule against it which means that the bot can now pick it up and do some work so it helps with the optimization process okay brilliant thank you um they're, they're coming thick and fast at the moment so uh, this is great this That's great right, interaction um so he well, was what not what so what Sorry. i do mark while i'm here, so this this is another um i'll keep answering the question because yeah, okay. this bit so this bit, this the next the next use case is a money soft one. So uh, and this is the bot performing uh, payroll uh, uh, processing. Uh, and those that are familiar know that monthly, you know, for or so in some cases weekly, you have to return uh, either FPS or EPS to HMRC, depend on time of year. Email the reports to uh, clients. Email basically to employees and download P30. Now this is a scenario that again we find in 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 practice. So I will we'll see the bot again, you know, same bot doing a, a performing a different task. Uh, we'll get it started and then he's going to start doing some work and then we'll come back to answering some of the, the questions that you've got. Mark, we can we can pick up from where you start. What, what, what were you saying again, Mark? Okay, so well, there was what? one about, um, Hughes asked about Brightpay, will it solve director only payrolls where you can click and forget? So I guess you're gonna be going through that in a minute anyway. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I think this this is a money soft example, but the process is quite similar, right? So you can have the same bot, you know, do some work in zero and then do some payroll processing in bright pay. We have a few, few clients who we've uh, deployed that for. Um, this is money soft again, fairly similar. 
So I hope he answers the question, Mark. Yeah, so there was just one question that I think is quite important at this moment. So um, Carla's asked about, does it work with bright pay? And I think the most important, I mean, from my perspective, if I, if I may but give my, my thought on that question, is that basically it is anything that you do on a computer. It can open up, it can run certain tasks. So anything you can teach it to do, it can use. So the software um, is almost irrelevant. Is that, is that fair? That's spot on, spot on, Mark. So the software is irrelevant. It doesn't matter whether it's a cloud application. Uh, um, it doesn't matter whether it's a desktop application. As long as you can show me and my team how you perform the task in a standardized way, we can train the bot to do it. So essentially, we're running payroll while we're asking and talking, talking and answer, answering questions at the moment. Absolutely. And this could be you having a conversation with a client while the bot is walking in the background or on his own computer. Excellent. And um, Paul's asked a question, but I don't think it's complete. Oh, he has now. There you go. So he's just finished off typing. So um, Paul said, for a new client take on, I can enter the standing data and then set up a client in Iris, set the client up in zero, set client, set up client in zero, verify them on AML, send out letter of engagement, and get them authorized with HMRC. I presume that's him asking, and Paul's asking if if you would be able to replicate that. Yeah, so that's the way he's described it. Yes. <laughs> excellent, excellent, brilliant. All right, well, um, I'll uh, I'll leave you to carry on the. Uh, hopefully, that's answered Paul's question. If not, uh, add yeah. it in, and I'll leave you to it. Thanks a lot, Mark. So yeah, so I think in summary, if once it's a a standardized rules-based task, we can, my, my answer will probably be a yes most of the time. Now, the only time, the only caveat is obviously the whether you, whether it makes sense, you know, from an ROI perspective. So return on, you know, a time and cost investment uh, for you to do that. So if you, if you have a hundred clients and you have one particular client that you want to build something specific for, uh my advice would probably be okay let, let's have a think about it let's apply the 80 20 rule and look for those 80 percent of your clients who this will will uh will uh um, will, that will benefit from this automation because that's where you get the economies of uh of scale right but technically speaking once is something that you can do on a desktop laptop computer using a keyboard and a mouse or a mouse, um, we can most likely train the bot to, to do it, as long as there's a standard process around it. And so I've given us two use cases, but these are some of that use cases that you might want to think about. So we've looked at uh, reconciling business bank accounts for one or more clients. We've equally looked at the uh, payroll side of things, but some of the lesser obvious ones are things like around the tax, tax uh, submission. So it both can be trained to collate data, prepare the reports, calculate tax payable, and submit filings, you know, in any of those portals. Uh, the bot can equally be trained to uh, create management reports, packs, and all that, and send them to, to clients in either uh, using flows or SIFT, and a host of other things. So it can be trained to we have bots at the moment that are downloading uh, information from supplier website, invoices from supplier websites and uploading them into Dex. Uh, we have bots that are converting uh, payroll data uh, that's been generated, exported from the likes of Brightpay or Moneysoft, converting them from uh, um, PDFs into CSV and then um, creating journals in zero. So the application, your applicability of the tool is, is quite wide, okay? Um, and so I think in summary, if, if you're thinking about your business, you're thinking about your goals, if you're, if you're thinking, I want to build my practice a bit faster, you know, the bots can help you to actually make better decisions and get an accurate view of, you know, the state of play within the practice or even within the client's business. If you're, if you're looking to reduce cost, again, it helps to automate manual activities that are time consuming. 
Uh, it can help you grow revenue because as an example, um, and we'll look at it further down, because the bot, the bot creates so much capacity in the business, um, you can actually start creating a service around some of the things that previously were a bit unprofitable, put it that way. So bookkeeping might be one of the things that you want to do, their necessity, but there might be uh, uh, a rev gen activity, but now having a bot doing it and because it's fixed, really, you can actually scale your operations around that. And because you're now freeing up time to now focus more on your customer, customer experience will be better, uh, customer satisfaction levels will scale, uh, you reduce the risk of not being of your clients not being compliant because you can actually set the board to do certain specific certain time specific activities and generally speaking you can elevate your employee experience because they're not having to do drudgery you know uh grunt work they can now move on to the kind of things that are a bit more interesting uh for them so these are some of the things. And then as a practice owner, obviously, you're looking at quantifiable benefits. So we're finding that, that uh, practices that have adopted or businesses really generally that have adopted this technology are able to slash manual processing times by as much as 90 percent. Uh, on average, 30 to 50 percent tends to be the norm. They're able to increase staff productivity as well. Uh, 30, 35 to 50% again is the average that we're finding. And then as the business grows, you're finding that you're able to reduce um, uh, costs to the business, operating costs by as much as 50%. Uh, and then on a from a data perspective, you can reduce uh, those uh, costly human errors. So Generally speaking, if, it, if, if I, I find out for myself, I don't know whether it's the same for everyone else, but if I do the same thing a hundred times, the chances of me getting it a hundred percent correct is, is uh, it's not real. So, so there are chances you reduce that by getting a robot to do that. A robot doesn't get tired. It doesn't get fatigued. It doesn't get bored. And it, has full, it gives it its full attention. So those kind of things, those kind of human errors will be reduced. The need for rework will be reduced. And then you are obviously lowering average handling time. Okay, uh, other benefits, less quantifiable, you know, you can drive more value and profit for your business. And then I think one that I really like introduces greater elasticity. So, you know, those, those uh, peaks and throws that we get across the year. So especially taxes in when you have loads of uh, work to do. Um, you haven't got to worry about that anymore because the bot can scale. So the bot can work 24 hours. So you can actually scale your operations those times when it's needed. And then obviously when, once you've gone through that peak period, things go back to normal. You haven't got to worry about getting additional help in uh, for those times and thereby you're um, saving on those expenses. Okay. Right. Uh, I think I'll pause again in case there are any questions, Mark around benefits there we go sorry i was just having a uh, problem with the uh, starting the screen up yes um, there's been a couple um and th th there's just a few that are linked to some that was asked previously so i'm gonna i'm gonna change it s slightly but um hopefully i'll get the, get the answer so um carla's asked how quick do they work on specific tasks and um, from my own um perspective obviously you hit a button that said run on that but assuming it is that something that would normally be running so it would just keep checking if it had five accounts to do that reconciliation on would it just keep logging in and out of them just to keep doing it as it goes or is there a schedule or what's the process yeah so so they're very good very good question mark so there, there are two ways to run the bot so we have two types of bot really we've got the attended bot which is the one we saw uh, for those ones, you know, you can, whenever, you, excuse me, whenever you need to, you just click the button and it runs, you perform the task. Um, but you can as well uh, schedule the bot so we can schedule the bot to run at specific times of the day, night, you know, multiple times a day. Uh, we can actually even set up triggers. So if, if, uh, if as an example, we train the bot to constantly check an email account, 
as an example. And if there's an email in there, then it triggers another event. So there, there are different ways that it can be configured. But yeah, but the, I think the short answer is there are two types of bots. There's attended, which means that you're starting the bot yourself, and then there's unattended, which which runs on schedule. You okay. know, and it can run. So if I had a reconciliation of zero bot and I had 10 customers, I could say to you, I want to run it at midnight so that by the time I get up in the morning, my 10 customers are already done and I'm ready to do whatever else it is that's next. Absolutely. And that, that's that's what happens most of the time. Yeah. So it runs on schedule for most clients. Excellent. Okay. So Katie just said, uh, thinking about the bank reconciliation in zero, the system will often pick up a match that is not correct. For example, for round sum payments of common amounts such as 30 or 50 pound, can the bot be set up to ensure that mismatches are not reconciled, even if they are marked as marked green and okay? Yes, it can. So the one of the easiest ways to do that is by doing a name search. So, so in the example that I gave, what the bot will actually do will be if it's green matched, it will check the date range. So it's been trained to make sure that the date that the delta between the date in the bank and date zero is 90 days. If, we, if it's within 90 days, that's one requirement met. Then the next thing is trained to do would, or it could be trained to do, would be to check the name in the bank, Mark Swindale, and check the name in zero to see whether there is a Mark Swindale there. As an example, so if it if it and to to make it to make it tight, we could say it has to be exactly Mark Swindell. So it can be Mark S or M Swindell, which is still the same, isn't it? Well, yeah. the bot will now look at it and once, it's, once it doesn't see a Mark and a Swindell, it will ignore. Mm, okay, I think many will agree we don't want more than one Mark Swindell, but um... <laughs> that's who you're um, after. Mark. Excellent. So uh, Paul has asked, are there off the shelf workflows or do we have to set them all up ourselves? Um, oh, so the, well, the good, the good news is you haven't got to set up anything yourself. Um, so, but as I said, and I'll come, I'll come to that a bit later. Uh, okay. But yeah, so you haven't got to set up anything yourself. All you need to know is how you perform the task and spend some time showing uh, me, you know, or someone, a, a member of my team, how you perform the task. Once we once we see that and we've recorded and asked questions, it'll be almost as if you're training us, right? Okay. So get, get a new employee and train them on how you want to do the work and then give them an operations manual and send them on their merry way. It's the same thing. So once you've done that with us, we'll go get the bot trained up and set it to task. Excellent. And Salman's asked, can you work in zero while the bot is also working in a separate tab? No. So, so the, the bot is a digital worker and it uses the same. So when it's working, it's using the same resources as you would. So, so not that you can, what will happen is that you find yourself struggling with the bot. So you're trying to do something and the bot is trying to do something else. And then you guys are now, oh, yeah, let me, let me, let me have a go. Uh, so what we do, what we recommend is that you set up the bot the same way you would any, any uh, um, worker. It has set up a hosted desktop environment for the bot, or if you have a dedicated computer, then set that up. Or worst case scenario, shared resource. So the bot works at night, you work during the day. Brilliant. Thank you. I think that's most of the questions. Okay. All right. So uh, so I'll continue. So uh, I think really, I think what, what I wanted to to uh to reflect in this uh, in this slide is just to give us a sense of you know what is possible and who's been doing this. So the technology in question has been around for years and years and years. Uh, you might recognize some of the brands on the screen. We have the likes of Deutsche Bank, the uh, British American Tobacco, BP. We probably know uh, Saint James's Place, which is a wealth management organization. Uber for those of us that uh, that move around. Um, so these organizations have adopted our PA and are reaping the benefits. Now, for the longest time, the technology has been the preserve of large businesses. It's really because of the cost of implementing it. So typically, it will cost anywhere between $5,000 and $15,000 to deploy and maintain a bot. Okay, so, so I'll say that again. That's 
anywhere between 5,000 and 15,000 a year to, to own and maintain a bot, depending on what a number of factors. And, and so as you would imagine, you know, for large businesses, they are the ones that typically could, could afford it. Uh, and in addition to that implementation cost, you still look at things like having to train people internally to be able to maintain. You have the cost of third party integrations. You have the consultancy cost. You have maintenance and all the rest. So really, it's it's been uh, uh, the in the, within the domain of large businesses. Now, one of the things that's happened in the last few years, around, I'll say around since uh, COVID nineteen hit, has been one. The technology has advanced to a point where it can it can become affordable to smaller businesses. And so uh, that's led to the advent of the uh, robot as a service model. Uh, so we're all familiar with the as a service model, generally speaking. You have the SaaS and a few others, right? So what we're bringing that technology to the, the robotic space. So rather than having to uh, uh, go through the entire consultancy and analysis and um, building and owning and operating a bot, worrying about infrastructure and all that, you can simply consume it as a service. So you take a subscription out and you know you have a bot working within your practice for a flat fee, right? So there's no upfront cost. You know, you get full robot maintenance, you know, and then you can start reaping those benefits from day one. Essentially it helps you to get a quick return on your investment. Uh typically inside of six months, I'll say, you know, three months even, depending. Right. So robot as a service is uh, is is becoming more and more of the norm. And we're, we're some of the uh, um, the companies were we're part of the leaders in the space at the moment. Right. Uh, there was a question earlier about the cost of the service. How much will it cost? Uh, so I'm happy to say that you're not having to, like I said, no infrastructure to worry about and all the rest. So it's a subscription service. It starts at one hundred and fifty pounds a month. And it scales to about five hundred pounds a month, you know, and uh, and that's all in, right? We will for that you get unlimited number of tasks. You probably and then it depends on number of core applications that you want the bot to work on, um, and then you know you can either run the bot manually using the assistant, or we can set a a trigger act automation using the the scheduler. Okay, and that that's really how it works. Again, I'm going to pause because I know there was a question around uh, the cost. So I don't know what I want to revisit that, Mark. And I think that's going to, uh, that's your slide there is going to answer the question. Um, just, just very quickly for me. Um, so the, the, obviously the, the first one where you're talking about up to two core applications, so is that it can do two things at once or is that something different? uh slightly different so two right. core applications so you can get up to two core applications so a core application will be the main application that's used to perform a task so if you cast your mind back to say uh, bank reconciliation as an example the core application used for bank reconciliation will be zero right. uh, there might be other applications that you you might have to pick information from dext as an example not, not recommended but that won't be a core application. And then the second core application could be Monisoft or Brightday. And then for mm -hmm. that, you might have a Excel spreadsheet where information is stored that's used to do some work in Monisoft. Excellent. And Carly just asked us asked the question that I think that I've asked as well. So hopefully that answers your uh, question as well, Carly. Um, no, that I'm just going through the other list of questions that we had on the, on the pre-registration. I think you're covering it on here. So I'll, uh, I'll let you carry on with that. Fantastic. Um, I think we are. So apart from that, I don't think then I think all I wanted to share is some examples uh, of businesses, practices, you know, that have invested in this. And these are businesses that we might, some people on the call might know. So we've got LJM Bookkeeping. Lara, Lara Manton is one of the is one of the early adopters. Um, when we started working with Lara, she was spending hours and hours just doing manual uh, bank reconciliation in zero. Uh, since we've deployed her bot, she's been able to re reduce that time significantly. And more importantly, in her words, she's been able to gain a lot of capacity to take on more clients, uh, which is driving uh, her revenue growth. Uh, we've got Dan with uh, Level Accounting, again, 
similar in similar vein just in what i think one stands out for us uh with dan was that during the trial is because we we usually will uh, uh client all clients start out with a 60-day free trial so during the trial alone in the first month of his trial um dan was able to start save it to save uh, 60 hours in the first month alone and 30 percent of mass transactions are still being currently processed by his bot yeah so he's removed a lot of bottlenecks for him uh the next set of examples so we have aacs and an accountant in their case is a money soft one and before we started working with them they had i think was three uh, my memories have me right about three uh ftes having to go through uh a host of clients so they have over 700 clients who they have to do uh, a director only and director plus employee um, payroll processing for in Monisoft. And they be able to claim back at least 90% of that their time in, uh, in Monisoft, which is for them, is, is gone from four to five days of work to less than 30 hours a month. Uh, so, and then base practice again, turn their cycle time and save them at least 50 hours per month in manual um uh, manual um uh, repetitive tasks and in their in their one so th their one is quite interesting because so base base support base practice support they support uh, uh uh accounting partners so so they work with different accounting firms in the uk and do back office um processing for them and so so by by working with or by deploying the bots they've been able to serve a lot more of the accounting accountant partners uh and then just two more and then i think you probably get the idea already um so Cornish accounting one of our, our newer clients uh again is zero bank reconciliation so set up zero bank reconciliation they're now looking at other opportunities within their practice uh and one of the ones that we're looking at at the moment is for their payroll uh journal so again they're looking at so uh, uh paul is quite an interesting character because he's constant he's looking at how to effectively get all uh, manual repetitive tasks within the organization to be robotized. So once we become a, a, uh, a thought leader in space. Um, and the other Paul of next level business, again, you know, he's been able to robotize it. When we started working with Paul, uh, which is why it's interesting. He's really in numbers. This is an accountant. You think everybody is, but he's really into his numbers. And when we started, he set himself a target of getting to 70, 80% of tasks being done by the bot. When we started, he made sure that there was a, almost like a, a, uh, a benchmark of where they were. And at the time, the first month they did about, it was about 23% of bank reconciliation was being done by the bot. Then he actually set up a project team to constantly look at ways to optimize uh, the work that they do with clients so that the bots will start picking up more and more. So much so that within six months of working with us, he was able to go from that, like I said, to in 3% to nearer to 60%, which was remarkable. But, but again, that but, but that reflects the the um what needs to happen. So it's not a an implement and forget. It's it's something that you put in place to actually help to drive efficiency growth, efficiency gain within the practice. So usually I'll, I'll, uh, um, I recommend to clients that they not just put it in there and forget about it, but put it in there and start thinking, as soon as we start working, is thinking about what else can, what else can I do? What else can we automate? What else, how can we get the current process to be even more uh, better optimized so that the bot can do more of the same? Because it means that I can get, and then, Interesting fact is, as as they're doing the work again from from Paul's learning, as they're doing the work, they're now recognizing the kind of clients that are best placed for those kind of services. And in their marketing, they start targeting those. They start targeting those kind of clients so that they can build uh, a larger customer base of those kind of clients, which will mean that they are op fully optimizing the the um, or maximizing returns from their investment in the tool because at the end of the day, it is a tool. Excellent. Are you ready for some more for some more questions? I am. I am, Mark. Um, well, there's a really good one, which I always like, um, at which I'm sure Michelle is going to help us out with very soon. So it's how do you sign up? So I know that Michelle is going to put a link 
uh, in which includes a 60 day free trial for our community. Um, so that is will be going in the chat box uh, the chat box very very soon. Um, and I love the fact that you've managed to get bottleneck in in there a few times as well. Given that Simon's uh, book is called Banish the Bottleneck, so I think it's uh, the presentation is well on brand. Um, so Carly's asked, uh, can the bot do tasks which aren't necessarily regular, such as raising uh, dividend docs in Inform Direct, i.e., can we ask it to run a dividend? dated x for uh, x pounds uh that's an interesting one so when you say it's not fairly regular is it voluminous uh do we want to get if uh, if carly can just uh, put your your comment in the uh, q a again for us i'll, I'll answer yeah, to that, that but um, I, i'm that, guessing I think... i'm guessing if yeah, it's so, something yeah. that you do regularly it's going to be some or, or something that's that somebody just clicks on certain fields you're going to be able to train them train the bots to do that uh, yeah, so so the bot can be trained to do anything that is structured, right? So if you, if you have a step one, step two, step three, step hundred to do it, we can train the bot to to do it. It doesn't matter whether it's ad hoc or something that is fairly uh, uh, repetitive. Obviously, the repetitive ones are better. So when I say ad hoc, it could be a task that you do once a year. It could be a task that happens once every quarter. You know, it could be a task that happens at a set time, you know, and then, well, as long as you understand when it needs to happen, A, we can schedule the bot to do it then, or B, we can train the bot to look for the triggers. So you can, you can because you, because it's, because you can have an attended bot as an example, and when you meet that scenario, you just click a button and the bot does it. I guess that comes back down to the original bit about the core application. So depending on what, so I think if, if I interpret what you said earlier on is the core applications really is something that you need to make sure that you are utilizing those core applications on the software that is creating you the most amount of uh, time deficiency. I, I, I'll agree with you. Yeah, so Carly's, but so it's just being done now and again, so not a regular date for each client. So if it's a task, we would trigger so the bot can work as we need to trigger. Yes, I think that's what we've we've, we've just said. I hope that. Um, so just hope click, that click, click for those kind of scenarios. Just if you open the application, click the run button, and the bot will run. Yes. Okay. Um, so I think on the application itself, Nicole's answered a uh, asked a question. Sorry, are you from UiPath or are you using UiPath? Uh, no, so we are using so UiPad is a, is a uh, a technology, and we just we just we're consuming so it's software with a service. We are using UiPath. We're not UiPath. We're Synergy. Excellent. Uh, Anil said, "Can post the accounts and CT six hundred entries to tax for calc from Excel." I'm I'm going to answer that. I reckon yes. <laughs> yeah, I. I, I I will let you obviously further detail that further, but um, I, again, I think it's just that whatever you can teach generally it, right? Speaking, yeah, I think generally speaking, my answer will probably be a yes. If you can say so again, it's does it? Do you have a stepwise process for completing the task? If the answer is yes, then yes, we can train the bot to do it. So the only thing that we can't train the bot to do is anything that requires. Uh, intelligence or creativity, you know, there's no, this, we're fuzzy about the rules, how it, it depends on whether it's a Tuesday or, uh, we, you know, it's, it's a bit fuzzy. Well, if it's a bit fuzzy, then we can train the bot. But once we're clear on how the task is performed, we can train the bot to, to do it. So I guess that cut, and there's there's a couple of questions that were asked uh, on the registration, and it was, um, do you anticipate IA, sorry, AI replacing bookkeepers, or will it just be used as a tool to help bookkeepers? Um, uh, or and then there was the other one that do you see robots replacing the bookkeepers' accountants or being supervised by them? No, I think I think I think it's it, I don't think the conversation should be around whether they'll be replaced. I think people have been talking about humans being replaced by technology for eons right so we we used to use hose for our farming then we we mechanized it but we still do farming right so the same way in the it, we got industrialized and we're still we're using technology to do some of the work all that's happening to my mind is that there is a shift there's a change that's about to happen ai will always remain a tool but there's some things that are basically human 
And I think we're going to we're coming to a point where we need to start doing most of the work that are human related rather than robotic in nature, right? So I think it's not an it's not an either or. I think there will there'll be that skepticism. Will some jobs be be eliminated by robots and AI? Yes, that is a fact. We can't we can't shy away from it. But hopefully the winners, as I perceive them, will be those people who are able to understand the technology, adopt it early enough, and understand how it can help them to transcend to the next level in their business journey. Yeah, and, sure and from my perspective as well, I also think it would improve a, a bookkeeper's job because they're no longer no. doing. I mean, you you know, the, the the words that again, not necessarily your words. I think they were similar, but the mundane routine tasks. Well, no one wants to be doing those anyway, do they? It's, it's it, so it's it's you're going to get higher skilled bookkeepers because they're going to be able to do more and learn more and be and be a better version without all the monotonous stuff in the background, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely, and 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 it helps. I mean, if you think, so I was having, I had an interesting conversation with uh, Steve Dow of F, uh, VFD yesterday, and and we we're talking about you know automation and how it's help, it's supposed to be helping accountants, and one of the things that came across came across was the fact that really, if you think about clients, our clients are looking to us to help them to better manage their numbers so that they can grow their business, right? But we find that accountants are so busy. With these mundane tasks that they can't they can't get their head up to look at their clients and work with them. Clients are crying for advisory services, but we haven't got the time. This creates the time. Mm. Yeah. Make sure that we continue to be relevant. I like that one. I think that's really important to, to take. If nothing else to take from this, I think that's really important. It's the, the, the ability to get your head out of the of the books and to be able to sell better, um, higher, higher level services is brilliant. So um there's a couple of questions if fully utilized how many people's work will a 24 7 bot cover how long is a piece of string <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, at least so 24 hours worth of work right <laughs> at least 24 hours worth of work so i think um i think I, the it can it can in in the example that i gave with uh aacsl as an example so they were they, they had three people who had to for four or five days, yeah, I had to constantly be banging and doing stuff that is, you know. So, but today what happens is I have one person that looks, overlooks uh, or reviews what the bot has done, sends checks it to make sure that it's correct, you know. And these other two, two other people have gone, they haven't left the practice. They're still there. All they've done is they've moved on, on to other, on the other work because mm-hmm. there's always something to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Tanya asked, um, QuickBooks and Zero has AI built in already. How are the bots better than existing functionality that's already in place? Uh, so I think think of it as a complementary tool, not a replacement tool. So uh, so yes, QuickBooks and AI and uh, Zero. So Zero will Zero's AI is what suggests the green margin, right? So it's Zero AI that says, oh, this is a potential match and gives it a green. Right, but it doesn't click on the OK button. It still waits for you to do some other things. Now, in the future, in the future, Zero might decide to go the extra mile, and I am hoping that they will, so that we can relieve uh, uh, our people of having to click on that button. But in the interim, that's what the bot does. Is that last mile is what the bot does? It does the sense checking the way you would and decides whether or not you should click that button. Hmm. Okay. Um, Sue uh, asked, um, and and I think you have covered it, but I think it's a really interesting question to raise now. Um, But what's in it for me to have bots in my practice? Is is there one thing that maybe you've said or not said that perhaps is the the, the pinnacle? I'll, 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 uh, I think, Mark, the way to answer that will be to maybe maybe to play back some of the things I'm hearing from clients. Yep. Right. So a lot of our clients are saying, "I need my time back. I need time to spend with my more my family." Um, clients are saying, "You know, before I get someone in, you know, there's there's churn. You don't want to get somebody in. It's going to cost you a bit more, and all they end up doing is low level tasks. I want to get people in to do more higher margin work, right? And 
really and truly I'm thinking of growing my practice and I want to be able to grow it profitably. So these are three examples of what we're hearing. Excellent. Yeah. No, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so I've got a couple more questions to ask. I'm conscious of the time. So um, the Hugh has asked, I play around with my stream deck to create buttons where I can click a button and it will do multiple steps, uh, sometimes 50 plus steps. I can see the process and replicate or alter. Do we see your bot process stream? Um, do we need any more clarification on that? Because I'm not sure I understand the yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I understand. Hugh, if you are still on, if you can just give us a little bit more on that, that would be uh, good. Um, so the, the question that we we said we well we talked beforehand that I said I wasn't going to ask because I wasn't sure it was massively relevant, um, which I would love for you to answer now that you've told me you've got an answer to it. Which was um, at my class, how can I use Chat GPT in my bookkeeping business? Oh, oh <laughs> no! Uh, so I think. What I did, uh, very cheeky, so as soon as I saw that question, I was like, well, okay, what's the best way to answer it? And then I thought to myself, probably show people how to get value. You haven't got to do it yourself. So what I did was I went in, because I have the chat GPT app, so went in there and I asked the exact same question, right? And chat GPT came back with four different suggestions, which I haven't got to hand, unfortunately, but That's it's fun. given me a host of uh, responses you know, ways that it can help integrate what you're doing. There's data entry there and a few others. I haven't got my uh, my phone to hand. I could go get it, but yeah. No, I just thought it was really interesting that obviously interesting. Your, what you're talking about ne isn't necessarily the, the the AI that is chat GPT. Uh, from our perspective or from my perspective, certainly how I use it, which I think is, is very similar to what you've done, is essentially is if I have something to write that I'm not sure about, I will ask it. You have to be a bit specific. In my, my experience, you have to be very specific. Ask it to use UK English uh, language and tone and whatever tonality you want in it. Um, and it can then uh, give you something that you should be writing. Um, it's outdated in terms of laws, um, I believe. Um, so, but I understand the... Um, what's the other one? Is it the, one? Sorry? And it, the data that it has is up to 2021. Yes, so that's right. It has access to very recent data at the moment. So GPT-4, I think, has more recent data. Uh, yeah, but to your point, you can, if you if you understand how to set, if you, if you give it the right prompts, then it will come back to you with some answers. Now, caveat that is sometimes it can give you the wrong answers. It yeah. gives you the answers that you, it thinks that you want to hear. So you need to be a bit knowledgeable, but I think at least it can give you the initial start and then you yeah. can do more the reviewing. But most I, of the time, 100%. That's exactly what I do. And I copy it from chat GPT, paste it into Word, and then I put it in A, my own language and, and tone, but also use the, the information that's there and if it check it's uh, factually correct. So thank you. Um, so Hugh has just come back and said, um, basically, do we get to see your programming? Ah, uh, that's what he's asking. Oh, oh no, no, you don't. And if, if, you, if you needed to see the programming, then you probably don't need the tool to be fair. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, so unless there's any other questions, um, I just wanted to uh, repeat. So the uh, you've got a free 60 day trial, um, which I think is a, is a brilliant offer to have. Um, and also um, 10 days, I think you said, basically to get a bot started up. So you know, you're going to have with inside a two week period, people are going to have hours and hours of time saved just by doing some very menial tasks. And if I got it correctly for 150 quid a month. So um, we have lots of conversations and Simon will always tell me there's lots or tell everybody that listens. That there's lots of people out there for the industry for accounting um, recruitment. However, if you're currently struggling to find a bookkeeper, I think this is a great way to at least start some of the process to free up some of your time to really understand what it is you need in your in your practice. Um, so uh, it just leaves me to say thank you very much. Thank you for everybody that's asked questions. Uh, really appreciate uh, everyone taking the time out of their days. Uh, Michelle has popped the link back in the chat box, so it's right at the bottom. Uh, so click on that link uh, to book a call. Um, and um, yes, thank you very much, Kanayo, for your time. And uh, we'll speak to you again soon. All right, then. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye.
Thank you for watching our webinar with Canio from Synergy. If you like what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel to ensure you don't miss any of our recordings, which will help inspire, challenge and support you to be the best you want to be. Wasn't it a great webinar with Canio? And just to see how much time they can save accounts and bookkeepers on the mundane tasks. The future is looking great for accountants. You will be able to save your timing. And as he said, get your head out of the numbers and help your customers even more deliver more value and charge more. So watch out for the two videos below uh, and we will see you again soon.